Yo, what's going on guys? So today we're gonna be showing off the new Box of Friends archetype with the little uh, Miss Mad Chen, some of the newer cards and new support for the deck, kind of explaining the combos because it's really fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and break out down the combos for you guys and kind of show you guys what the deck can do. You can actually pull off a really cool super OTK. So what the deck is all really about is summoning these vanillas. Now, first off, Christia doesn't let us buff summon, so we're gonna have to get rid of that card first in order to really do anything. So Imperm will be used very soon here and you guys will see the cool combo that you can do with this deck. You could do an insane amount of damage. You could probably do a one versus two in a tag duel uh, with this. So obviously to start off the uh, play, we have to stop our opponent from locking us out of special summoning. So here's the important part of the combo and I'll explain it because it does go by really fast for any of you guys that might be interested in playing this archetype. So Doll Happiness just lets you go ahead and search out the Grandpa Demito or you can go ahead and add that box of friends. You actually have to pop box of friends to get its effect. It's gonna go ahead and bring out double vanilla monsters. Um, it brings out technically two normal monsters whose attack or defense is zero, but to support the archetype, we're using what would be the cards that are more so the appropriate targets. Now, they can't be used as synchro material, but that doesn't really matter anyways, because Doll Happiness makes that effect over here where you're able to go ahead and um, activate this effect where you're gonna go ahead and destroy a monster in your hand or field, and then you get to send a doll monster monster from your deck to the graveyard. Um, so you can only go for exceeds and they can't be used for synchro material, but it doesn't matter because that makes it so you're locked to exceeds anyways. So you're gonna go ahead and bring out double vanillas over here and then you're gonna go ahead and make the Princess Cologne. Princess Cologne will then have that effect to bring back your box of friends, which will go ahead and pop a second time with your Grandpa Demito. So Grandpa Demito, You'll see he'll come out over here. So you can detach him here from a Princess clone to uh, special summon up to two normal monsters with zero attack or defense from your graveyard as level eight dark monsters. So technically it's a uh, rank four that is also going into rank eight. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, if your exceed monster activates effect by detaching material, you can target uh, that mon exceed monster and one monster your opponent controls, destroy that opponent's monster and then burn your opponent uh, damage equal to the exceed monster's rank times 300. Since they're gonna be uh, level eight, you're gonna go into rank eight, and that means it's 2,400 burn damage. So you guys will see uh, Grand Demito gonna get that effect, bringing back the double vanillas. Now, unfortunately, they happen to be wind and then light. If they were earth, this would actually be a lot better, and we'll kind of explain more about that in a second here. But then these will become level eight, allowing you to go ahead and go into Titanic Galaxy, or if, you know, if, that's if you're going for like a turn one play. But if you're going for a turn two play and you wanna OTK your opponent doing massive amounts of damage, you can bring out number 97, which, goes ahead and lets you bring out number um, 100 right here, the Numeron Dragon, here it is, and he's gonna activate this effect. So uh, he's gonna go ahead and burn his opponent, get rid of that card, so remember, you're gonna be able to destroy that monster, then also burn them. Then what num or, uh, number 100 Numeron Dragon does is he's gonna be boosted up by a thousand times the uh, ranks on the field. So over here, minimum we have uh, rank four plus eight, that's 12, and then plus itself, so that's 13. So minimum, he comes out at 13,000 damage, plus you're gonna pop your opponent's card and do some burn damage. So this is the play that I would consider good. Obviously, you're going second, because there's no disruptions here. This is to go all in and go for game. So that's the power play that you can do with this deck. Because remember, you are locked in exceeds, so there's no link plays here. But you can still play the deck more, I would say, in the uh, realm of more competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! making other plays and I'll kind of go ahead and show you guys what you can do with the deck. Now you are kind of limited to what you can technically pull off due to uh, only being able to go for let's say um, exceed monsters or uh, again making it so you can't use it as uh, synchro uh, material unfortunately with box of friends otherwise the vanilla targets would actually be quite great for this archetype. Now you can mix in things like Kage to Kage or just make it kind of a rank uh, four spam deck but you'll see that you can still go into Bow of the Goddess although it does heavily invest in a lot of cards in your hand but you do happen to have cards like Avarice which definitely help out later down the line because you will be summoning your cards from the deck. You'll have a lot of bricks that you don't want to draw and you definitely want to have them in the deck because they're going to be special summon from the deck versus from the graveyard. You kind of need to have uh, double targets in the uh, deck uh, and maybe two targets in the grave. It just really helps out for the deck, but it's really conditional. So I don't see this deck being competitive at all in its current state, but you can try to make it as competitive as possible. That's what we're kind of showing off over here. Uh, what you can do with the deck because the monsters happen to have the zero defense. Mass Chameleon could be also a great option for a follow-up play going into Savage Dragon. Again, this would be something where you don't activate the card where you can only go for exceeds, but you can still make Savage Dragon as a follow-up play. I mean, ideally, if you can make cards like Savage Dragon plus uh, Bow of the Goddess. Those are ideal, and we're showing it off in this, uh, you know, gameplay here. It's not all in one turn because 
the deck doesn't really facilitate that many free pluses without having the restrictions of you can't go for synchros and then you're on top of that you can't go uh, for anything except for exceed so there's a lot of conditions in this deck that make it not as powerful but cards like Avarice definitely do help out the archetype um, quite a bit and I still feel like the deck uh, needs a lot more support if they're going to be uh, anywhere near, uh, you know, what could be considered uh, competitive in the uh, state of the game. Just because, again, you're playing so many bricks in this deck. Uh, again, you're going to have, you know, multiple vanillas. And on top of that, if you're going to be running lots of avarices, which will definitely help out your grind game uh, and potentially in the early game, depending on what you happen to have. Um, you can run into the situations where it's just Brick City with this deck. Um, but you also have access to, again, the True King. You saw uh, the Box of Friends being popped via the Dragonic Diagram. So you can go and activate its effect, not off of just its own archetype, but anything that would be popping cards. So now you guys have seen an action, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the deck and I'll talk a little bit more about the other things that you can do with it, as well as give you guys a brief little deck profile. So let's go ahead and hop right into that. So I'll hop you right into the deck profile. And big shout out to my homie Teriyaki for hooking me up with this uh, deck profile as well as the gameplay here. So honestly, the deck isn't what I would consider super meta. Once again, at the end of the day, uh, it is very susceptible to losing to like, you know, a heavy amount of monster negation or just, uh, you know, how Yu-Gi-Oh is. It's just kind of uh, a negate fest. Now, there's nothing with this deck that like lets you protect your cards. Technically, how the deck is supposed to run uh, with the uh, whole archetype over here, the Princess Cologne makes it so uh, while you control Princess cologne with dull happiness monsters your opponent controls cannot target monsters with zero attack or defense um so it's just a very mediocre effect and then princess cologne also has this effect over here where uh, obviously you could bring back that box of friends and then if a normal monster control is destroyed battle by card effect and sent to the graveyard you detach a material from this card to summon a normal monster from your uh, deck or graveyard in defense position but since we're only playing things that have zero stats anyways we're not going to be bringing back like a very strong monster i mean i guess you could really try to bring out something and now obviously it doesn't really have too much uh, of a downside other than it being in defense position so it's not like you're going to bring back like you you know, a blue eyes, a blue eyes, a princess cologne deck is probably not going to be the most uh, popular of things. But there are a few cards that I wanted to go ahead and mention over here. Uh, cards like uh, Rescue Rabbit can definitely be utilized to go ahead and get out those double vanillas, as you do want to go ahead and have them uh, in the graveyard as well for perhaps your grandpa Demito, uh, which we didn't really get to cover in the gameplay. But it's simple, it just brings out this a one card and summon two. And then cards like, of course, your Droplet can definitely help out with some of the bad vanilla draws. Um, heck, I was. Even thinking mallet would be a viable option because like these cards are definitely not very useful in the hand although you have cards like kage shokage which let you go ahead and when you normal summon at level four you can go and special summon it so it can kind of help out with that but overall i would probably not recommend this deck for anyone that's interested in playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. but i'll go ahead and mouse over the cards and give you guys a brief little deck profile in case any of you guys want to go ahead and modify this deck and let me know your guys' thoughts on uh this build and if you guys have some suggestions, let me know as well. Uh, but I think this archetype is super underdeveloped right now. It just needs a lot more support. So we have uh, triple copies of Mad Chen and the Bear Bear. These are the new vanilla cards that recently came out. And then, of course, the True King over here to go ahead and pop. We also happen to have Rescue Rabbit. It happens to be Earth, eh, uh, which is quite awesome as well. Same thing with Mask Chameleon, which is like a one card go for uh, instant access to Scrap Dragon uh, is another card. Uh, we technically made Savage Dragon, which is probably the better option. But going th for things like Scrap Dragon would be great too, you can go and pop a card that you control and one card your opponent controls. This is more of like an old school Yu-Gi-Oh card that I really liked back in the day. Uh, but yeah, Mask Chameleon is a cool little card as well. And since both of these happen to be Reptile, you can actually go for the King of Feral Umps and then go and search it out. But most of the time you need to go ahead and go for a Princess Cologne if you want to play the archetype, I guess, correct over here. And then we have, um, of course, three cops of Mask Chameleon, Kage to Kage, then Rescue Rabbit, and then three cops of Box of Friends. This card is just really slow. It has to be destroyed and sent to the graveyard in order to get that effect. Like, set, set this card pass is terrible. You can also consider running cards like one for one that will let you go ahead and instantly uh, bring it out over here, which will then let you just go pop it via another effect like the uh, uh, diagram or whatever archetype that you want to use. You could metal foe it as well. Uh, maybe go for some uh, popping. And then three copies of Grand Demito, then one for one, double copies of Avers, through Terraforming, four crooks, through one Draconic Diagram, and then a Disparity just to search out that one specific card uh, because it's very important to go ahead and have, like, let's see, the Grandpa or the Doll Happiness to start off your combo uh, with the the uh, deck. And then we have the one called by the grave. Then three copies of Droplet because you need to get your effects off. And same thing with like Impermanence. And we already went over Doll Happiness. So triple copies of that, triple Droplets, and then uh, Diagram, and then Imperm. And for the extra deck, I pretty much went over uh, the important, like the important cards really are going to be this card. A Zeus is great for any deck that can go into any exceeds because it's just a free extra card. If you're going for turn one plays, 
Titanic Galaxy is obviously way better than the play that uh, is going for the ODK, which is the Numeron Dragon in combination with, of course, the uh, number 97. So these cards are great for going for OTK plays. Uh, this card's obviously required too. This card, again, searches out uh, Chameleon as well as Kage Tokage. I think these cards would, uh, are the cards that I consider really important for the deck. The rest, yeah, you could definitely uh, swap them in and out. And also, Zombie Stein has a pretty decent you know, amount of stats, so it's 4,500. And then uh, during either player's turn, you attach material, then send one card from your hand to the graveyard, target a face of card your opponent controls, and change this card defense version and then negate its effect this card doesn't have the greatest in the defensive department but it does at least offer some sort of negation other than your number uh 38 the titanic galaxy which is uh, like again, another fantastic turn one play i think that this archetype is going to be uh something that i'll keep my radar out on it because i really do like the idea of having like princess cologne as its own archetype but it's super underwhelming but that's what the deck currently does in its newer uh, state with of course the newer support but anyways that's going to go ahead and wrap up the video thanks for tuning in, guys hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did, drop a like on it, and if you are new here and you want to see more new Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff in the future, subscribe and turn on that bell, and you'll definitely see more. Big shouts to my uh, homie Teriyaki once again for hooking up with the game plan deck profile. But take care, guys, and I'll catch you on the next video. Have a good one, and I'm signing out. Peace. Also, here's some videos up on the screen if you guys want to check out some more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Peace.